Hey everybody, welcome to Veritech. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about lying on your resume as a coder. All right, before we start this video, I wanna make sure that you like and subscribe. The more subscribers we get, the more content we can make. Remember that this channel doesn't do a Patreon, instead we sell our digital products down below. The more money we get from the products that you buy below, the more content we can make. So, how many people lie in their resume? Do you lie in your resume? Well, a lot of people do, and how do you compete with that? Well, the first thing you need to understand is why people lie on the resume in the first place. Lying your resume is really easy. You can simply just type a few things up and you automatically get more experience. And I can understand why people do it, specifically young people coming out of college, because it's very hard to get experience and you end up in that cycle of death where you need experience to get a job, but you can't get a job without experience. I find that to be very frustrating and very few companies like to train their employees. And I think this is something that is not very fair to the employees or very fair at all. However, this is just the way things are and as a business owner, I would rather hire someone with some experience than with zero experience. So I completely understand when a business does this. So obviously you shouldn't flat out lie on your resume. You shouldn't just make up a company and say that you work there or work for your friends and call that a company, but you should be truthful with what has happened. Now, oftentimes people will lie about the resume because of a job gap and job gaps are not really good when it comes to being hired. In fact, when you have a job, it's easier to find a job versus if you don't have a job. Now, this can happen to anyone. You can get laid off in November and believe it or not, no one's going to hire you in December, January, or it could be even as late as February or March before you get another job. And that's a lot of months in between jobs. So what would you do in this time? Well, if I were working at a big company and I got laid off in, let's say, November or December or at a very inopportune time, what I would do is I would so literally start a new company and work on that in the interim. You can always be honest with the HR person and say that you like working for a big company and that you're not an entrepreneur. So a lot of big companies won't hire entrepreneurs because they don't necessarily fit within the big company atmosphere and the personality traits are a little bit different. So you can say that you would like to work for a big company because you literally were just working for a big company and you got laid off, for instance, and in the interim, you made all these projects so that you didn't have a huge job gap, but you would rather work for a big company. This is something that's really honest. Now, if you're just honest about it and you find a way to convince the HR person that A, you're a self-starter, B, you like working for a company, and C, that you're actually competent, you'll probably get hired. The first job you get is going to be the hardest. You're going to have to work really hard. Lots of people do unpaid internships, but I would recommend interning at your own company. Now, I graduated in 2008 in the worst financial crisis in a very long time, so it was very hard for me to find a job. Now, I had to intern at my own company, but nowadays it's much easier. But even then, it still can be difficult as a junior coder to get a job. In fact, I know that there are lots of junior coders that are really good coders and they still haven't found a job yet. Now, this can be a lot of reasons. They can be very picky about the job or they're just simply not enough uh, jobs in that particular area. You have to really understand that sometimes there might not be a job for you in your specific area at that time. It can be very difficult to find a job, but once you do find a job, you want to make sure that you maximize that opportunity. Let's say you find a job, for instance, and it's not to your liking. Well, you want to stay there for as long as humanly possible. And if you really want to move on, then you can move on later. You can always interview at a different time. So should you really lie on your resume? Well, the answer is no. You should definitely not do that because it can come back and haunt you. And furthermore, it's very easy to lie on your resume and then go down the slippery slope of being lazy because it's way easier to align your resume, that is type up that you have some job experience versus any kind of actual work. Remember that if you start down the slope of lying, then it's going to snowball and all of a sudden you're not gonna be as productive. And as a coder, you really have to be productive. Think of it this way, could a basketball superstar lie in their resume? No, they couldn't because if they're not good at playing, then they're not gonna get on the team. 
You, as a coder, have to have that same mentality. You have to be like that basketball superstar and be able to perform. Now, if you're a good coder and you make connections, you'll probably find work more easily than if you don't. I would say the hardest part of the job process as a programmer is to find that first job. But once you find that first job, if you're easy to work with, you continue to learn, and you continue to make connections, then you will be employed for life. So in short, don't lie in your resume. All right, so that concludes this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe. The more subscribers we get, the more content we can make. Remember that this channel doesn't do a Patreon and said we sell our digital products down below. If you really want to help with this channel, you can subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. We have everything from machine learning to Photoshop tutorials to game tutorials to Blender tutorials. We have a lot of content. In fact, we release 20 to 60 hours of fresh new content per month. If you already are a monthly subscriber to Mammoth Interactive, thank you so much. Not only do you make this YouTube channel possible, but you make Mammoth Interactive possible. Our goal is to get to 10,000 monthly subscribers. Thanks for listening. I'll see you in another video.